Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining Sunday service today. My name is Norio Suzuki, a head minister of Happy Science, uh, Australia Shoshinka. Uh, today, uh, this theme, today's theme is Lord El Kantare and the Eternal Buddha. Lord El Kantare and the Eternal Buddha. Okay. Uh, we are now focusing on the every day's prayer for Master Resurrection uh, from the early March last month. Okay. So this is a very important time to to uh, deepen our faith in El Kantare. Uh, so uh, we want to I want to learn about our faith from the basic things, including the basic things. Sorry. Uh, Three, we will recite prayer to uh, uh, two words spoken by Buddha, and uh, uh, we'll have the words of uh, gratitude to Lord Ekantar. <laughs> The true words spoken by Buddha, you go, Oka. Yeah, you be the light in the great universe. The light is the energy of Buddha. People can live by this energy, and Buddha's energy has made human history. It will be supplied eternally. This eternal light comes from heaven and prevails on earth. This is the light of heaven. Through the prism of Buddha, there appear the seven colors of rainbow arching over in the sky. Here you can see Buddha's mercy. Yellow is a color of teaching. White is a color of saving. Red is a color of justice. Purple is a color of obedience. Blue is a color of thinking. Green is a color of harmony. Silver is a color of progress. These seven colors help each other, and there appears Buddha land. Buddha land is shining brightly because of gathering of bodhisattvas. This is the land of love, the land of mercy. This is the land of wisdom, the land of teaching. Especially, this is the land of souls rest in peace. We are souls that are the children of Buddha. The children of Buddha became real human beings. Real human beings have spirituality. The spirit are immortal powers. The spirit are immortal forces. The spirit are real entities. The physical bodies are the shadows of the spirit. It means you are the boat sailing down the great river. The Great River is a symbol of the course of lives. Each of you sail down as a small boat, so you need a boatman. If it were not for your own boatman, you surely go aground. This boatman really means your mind. If your mind makes a mistake, the boat breaks into pieces by a large rock. And you also need a bamboo pole. This pole is the meaning of the true words. When you go down a rapid stream, you need to pan in the stream then you can change your course. The true words mean the teaching of Buddha. Buddha enlightened and spoke the true words, and Buddha teaching became a gold mine. This gold mine suggests various teachings. These are another expression of Buddha's truth. He brightened up your days, or to put it another way, the proof of Buddha's mercy. All of you, now here listen to me. Never lose your way, and now forever. The guiding hand had already waved. Please follow this white hand and go straightly on and on. Your lives are not limited to this world only. They have three aspects, the past, present, the future. Your past have already gone back. Yet still, your mistakes will be kept in your mind. That is a reason why you should understand other people and you yourself should reflect on what you have done. You and others are not different. On the contrary, both are children of Buddha. And brothers and sisters, now them, love each other, let us bring up each other, and it's time to forgive each other. This is the eternal road which penetrates present and the future. Yes, indeed, the light of the dark night. The dark night of this world is hell. It is also the same in another world. Since we came down to this world, the sun of the truth is scheduled to rise. 
Now we are watching rising sun. It shall light to the future to invite our people to Buddha land. Now here I command, there shall not be conflict in this world. There shall not be distrust in this world. There shall not be crime in this world. There shall not be evil spirit in this world. There shall not be the devil in the next world. Only the ideal world, utopia shall be realized. All of the people love each other, live harmoniously, believe in one another. That world is the utopia. All of us could be the light of body surface. Believe in that light her reality. Believe in that love her reality. Believe in that the truth her reality. These are the facts that should be conveyed. We, the light of body satvas, get together, work together to keep right mind, live in tune with Buddha's words. Here we bow to do so. Lord God Elkantare, Master Yuvo Okawa, Primordial Buddha of the Great Universe, Creator who teaches us what is good and evil on earth to establish God justice. Thank you for giving us your great mercy done every day. Today we, your disciples, gather here in order to deepen our faith in the Lord. Learn the truth deeply with our soul and renew our mission to save the world. Through this great program, we will feel the laws of Messiah, loves of Messiah in our heart, we commit ourselves truly to the spirit of love and spread the truth to the end of the world. Let's now dedicate us. Thank you for joining. Today's theme is uh, basic, but very, very deep and uh, important, but uh, faith in Lord Elkantare. And, uh, okay, uh, on this purpose, uh, we, uh, we, I choose the book, this book, The Eternal Buddha. Uh, original Japanese version was published in 1991. One of the most profound book to know about happy science. Okay, uh, so uh, first we would like to review the basic things about how happy science teaches about the religious world. Okay. As you can see from this illustration, the uh, spirit world, the real spirit world consists of different layers from four dimensional world in the left and the five six, seven, eight, nine dimension. This is a spiritual world of the earth. And uh, more, almost all the spirits are living in the fifth dimension, more than three, uh, 300,000, no, 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 300 million 
no, no, no. 40 billion, 40 billion of them, about 40 billion of them. And uh, we, as we go up parallel, the number of the spirit who are living there is very few, becoming fewer and fewer. Uh, taking the seventh dimension world, for example, it will be around 2,000, 20,000 or 30,000 of them. Uh, just, just that, uh, including, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, that's all people. They are the angels, they are the angels, guiding angels, or bodhisattvas in Buddhism. The number is not so big. And when we go up to the eighth dimensional world, it is only 500. 500 great Tathagata or uh, archangels. They are the great people who guided people uh, in the history. So they are very, very important person. Uh, we can, we can many, we know the names like uh, Edison, so example, Augustinus in Christianity. All well, these people are very great people who made a, a great contribution to human history in the world. Then the ninth dimension, ninth dimension is the highest, highest world in this sphere, our sphere. Only, only 10 uh, guiding speed uh, reside there. Uh, maybe, maybe many of the devout followers know all of them. Okay. Shakamuni, Elkantare, Jesus Christ, Confucius, Theravim, Manu, Maitreya, Newton, Zeus, Zoroaster, Moses, and Enlil. Okay. Uh, I put it in different color because the uh, blue part is like a master, fat master calls a minor heaven, well, hind, hind side of the spiritual world. They are not the front side. And the others are in the front side. And uh, we put uh, three of them in the, in the kind of red, red the Shakyamuni, Buddha, or El Cantare, Jesus Christ, or Amo, uh, Confucius, uh, Seraphim. These are the most powerful of them. These are regarded as in the living, in the upper level of the United Nations. Upper level. So, there is a distinction between upper level and the lower level in the ninth dimension. So these three of them is the most powerful, most uh, yeah, uh, important uh, ninth spirit, ninth dimensional spirit in the human history on this earth. So we first learned this kind of thing in Hanbi science. We thought the Shakyamuni, Jesus, Confucius is these kind of people, including Moses, uh, in the kind of same level, at first we thought same level, but uh, as we gradually learn, it is different, it is different. Shakyamuni, El Kantari is the highest one. He is, uh, he is the highest uh, God in the sphere of this uh, earth realm, earth future world. How different, how different, okay? Uh, this, uh, now, next I'll show you the very early movie of happy science. The terrifying, terrifying revelation of Nostradamus. Terrifying revelation of Nostradamus, which was released 1995. The very first movie, Fat Happy Science produced, very first movie. And I'll show you just the opening one minute, opening one minute. And the master told us this one minute, First scene is the most important scene in this whole movie. Two two hours movie. But just one minute of the first pass is a very important. Okay.
Uh, you, you know now, the difference between Alcantara and other ninth dimensional space is enormous, quite different. Overwhelmingly huge power, huge enlightenment. It is Alcantara. And uh, as you see, this is the scene of descendant of Master uh, of Alcantara as a master of power this time, which happened 1953, about 66 years ago. And the core spirit break up away from the existence in the heaven and uh, uh, okay they they break through the uh, barrier uh, dimensions there are barriers dimensions so uh, they come down it come down break break through the dimension and come to the cell dimension as well so this is a very very quite remarkable adventure very very difficult thing which happened our age okay so first we know the difference between el cantare and the other spirit in 1995 which uh okay it was when already uh, seven years has passed since the starting point of the happy science at the time we knew the difference oh such a great di difference between yeah. a as a as a high spirit okay Okay, uh, another important thing is uh, we I put the two books here. The, the, these of those of uh, these two books is very, very important books in happy science. One is the uh, reverse of Buddha, which is published 1987. 1987. Uh, the, the first year of happy science. And uh, okay, uh, the second one is Eternal Buddha, which was published five years later. 1991, 1991. So uh, at first, when we, uh, I was one of the first joiner of happy science, uh, means meaning that I joined happy science in 1987, the first year of happy science in uh, maybe July, August, August, maybe around that time. And uh, at that time, we don't know who is, Master Yuho Kawa. We thought, well, we believe he's one of the nice adventure existence, but we didn't know. He didn't reveal at the time who he is. And uh, publication of the reverse of Buddha is the first official announcement that he's a reborn Buddha. So we accepted him as a reverse of Buddha. Oh, Buddha reversed in Japan. It's remarkable. So we fast for rules like that. But gradually, as we learn from master teaching, it came, uh, became a bit different. Oh, not that bad. And uh, finally, Mr. Master published the Eternal Buddha. And at that time, he gave the first great lecture in Tokyo Dome. It was uh, 1991, July 1999. Okay. Uh, maybe many of you, most of you have. Uh, watched at least the uh, most important part that I show now you again. Ah, Sudan, Anatagata no Motoni, Todo K. Rarataru, A. No Buttato, you Waga show. ひもといてみるはよい。その一緒の中に綴られたる言葉に込められたるその思いをあなた方はその言葉が人から来たと。人間の考えであると思うか。あなた方は肉体に宿りたる。大川流法というなの。人間の存在にも迷ってはならぬ。
あなた方の前に立ちたるは大川隆法であって大川隆法ではないあなた方の前に立ち永遠の真理を語るはエル・カンターレである我はこの地球の最高の権限を握りたるものである我はこの地球の始めより終わりまで全ての権限を有するものであるなぜならば我は人間ではなく法そのものであるからだあなた方はその肉の目に惑わされてはならない神とはそして神そのものを表現し伝えているところの永遠のブッダとは人間ではないそれは法である教えであるノリであるこの大宇宙を滑るところの教えであるのだこの宇宙は偶然に作られたるものではない見破る天空に何一つの偶然はないこの地上にもまた何一つの偶然もない全てはこの葉一枚をするも神の法則のもとにある。Uh, this lecture or this event is、uh, one of the greatest e v e n t in the history of happy science because from that point, the happy science b e c a m e known、uh, Jap- uh, nationwide in Japan. Also, the name is spread to the、uh, other countries like in the United States, too.、Uh, yeah. Okay.、Uh, this is called Declaration of the El Cantare. Declaration of the El Cantare. Why El Cantare Declaration? Yeah. Huh? 1991, yes,、uh, the、uh, victory of faith. The title is Victory Face. That、uh, we call it、uh, this, uh, this, this、uh, event is a declaration of, of El, as El Cantare. But this is also declaration as Eternal Buddha.、Uh, I have an impression that、uh, El Cantare and、uh, Eternal Buddha i s、uh, different side of the same point. So, different side of the same coin. The, when we call him El Cantar, it is like a personality, personal, personal goal. The, when we call Eternal Buddha, it is kind of past,、uh, less personal. It is law itself, it is a teaching, it is an it is aspect of Eternal Buddha. When we are thinking, thinking about Eternal Buddha, it is The law that g o v e r n whole universe. So,、uh, in happy science,、uh, in order to know about El Cantar, about the God, it is very important to learn the teaching, study the teachings.、Uh, even though we might、uh, believe in God, if you don't learn his teaching, it doesn't mean we are understanding him. So, it is very important to, to learn, study, understand the teaching, what kind of teaching he is giving.、And、in this sense, one of the very important books is this Rose of the Sun, you may have already read. Because it, in this book, the God mind is condensed into the very organized way.、Uh, just 
just reading through this book, uh, through that we can learn, we can know, we know what kind of God we have. What a great mind, what a great mercy, what great uh, uh, wisdom with which he created this universe. So it is very important to understand God, to learn the teaching methodically or repeatedly. So this book is, in a sense, very important. Other books is also important, but uh, you should come come back to this uh, book repeatedly. Yeah, OK. So yeah, uh, this, this concept is to think a God or Buddha as a pitch or rule that that govern the uh, universe. That it is most important aspect of Buddhist thinking that is run through happy science. So God is not kind of a, mm, yeah, God is this transient personality or ego. He's a, he's an egress, egress existence that, that like a, okay, take a, take a sports like sports or something like that. You know, rugby, soccer, soccer, or baseball, it is created by rules and rules. Rules are, rules are govern, govern the, every game. And uh, the, there are many umpires or something like that. They, they watch, uh, they watch the rules are kept by the either uh, both team. But uh, if they, uh, some of them, uh, okay, uh, yeah, didn't obey, obey the rules, they were disqualified. <laughs> so the, this game is governed by the rules. That's, that's, that's like universe. We make into the bigger, bigger yeah. universe like that. So this rule itself is a mind of God. Rule, the set of the rule that governs the whole universe is God himself. Okay. Okay, after that, we want to watch Master's lecture on the Eternal Buddha. Eternal Buddha. That might, that you might be already watched uh, in the day of the Great Enlightenment. But uh, it was, today we watched the uh, except, but uh, before that, before that, uh, it is, uh, I'd like to read, I'd like to read out the important part of the Eternal Buddha. For you. Well, some of you might haven't the chance to read it uh, yet. Eternal Buddha, Chapter Five, Eternal Buddha. My disciples. Engrave the nostalgic sound of my voice into the depths of your soul, for it has been 2,600 years since my voice was last heard. Blessed are they who hear my voice while they have life on earth. You must cast aside all things to choose this blessed moment over all, over all else. I am the everlasting Buddha, the everlasting eternal Buddha. Through hundreds of incarnations, I have always been the everlasting Buddha, the everlasting master, and the eternal Buddha. The eternal Buddha is the eternal rose. The eternal, eternal rose is namely the mind of the primordial Buddha of the universe. Eternal Buddha manifests this mind in the form of principles and teachings. You must come to a thorough appreciation of the body of this truth. Do not let a single word that issues from my mouth, for, that issues force my front, uh, issues force from my mouth slip by. Read, understand, and accept into your minds, like that in is imbued each each and every word. Oh, you who have entered into the oath between master and disciple again after so many years, you are keenly aware of the alarming state of this generation. You know that it is the age of salvation. Pay heed to my words. I have not come to this world 
as a savior. I have come to this world as one greater than a savior. The people of this world will be saved. People on earth will be saved. As a matter of natural course, when the laws that I preach soak into the mind of people and are learned uh, slowly. However, my teaching shouldn't be trivialized as existing solely for the purpose of saving the people of the world. The value is beyond that. For this universe, this very world was created on the foundation of my words, my teachings. Again, I say unto you that these teachings I bestow upon you are not given solely for the purpose of saving your souls. The entire universe is governed according to these teachings. The past, present, future of humankind exists for the fulfillment of these teachings. The teachings exist in the past before humankind and will continue to exist in the future after humankind. I testify to you that the laws which I preach existed before humankind's creation and shall exist following the disappearance of humankind. You must understand that the teachings are Buddha himself expressed in a different form. When you are reading my teachings, you are seeing Buddha. If you desire to know Buddha, look at my teachings, for in them you will find the formless presence of Buddha. This means God. Do you gaze at the skies looking for Buddha? Do you close your eyes and search for Buddha? Do you look for Buddha in your imagination? Or do you open your spiritual eye and look for Buddha? All of these attempts will surely end in disappointment. For the true Buddha is without fall. And true Buddha is not even a spiritual being who has taken on the appearance of the high spirit from the real world, which lies beyond our own. The true Buddha is far greater than the spiritual being, and his true form is manifested through the teachings. All of you who seek to touch Buddha with your hand, chance to look upon Buddha with your eyes, and try to measure Buddha in accordance to your physical body. Pay heed to my words. Buddha cannot be sensed through the five sensory faculties. Buddha cannot be imagined. Buddha is the laws. Buddha is the teachings. The laws and teachings which I preach are the essence of entity of Buddha. Learn of my teachings and you will have looked upon Buddha. Hear my teachings and you will have heard the voice of Buddha. Understand my teaching and you will have understood the mind of Buddha. I say unto you again and again, the Buddha is without form. Buddha transcends humankind. Buddha transcends the human soul. Buddha transcends the sensation of human beings. Buddha is the very teachings that govern the entire universe. You are looking upon Buddha in the every page of this book that you are holding in your very hand. If you desire to know the nature of Buddha, deeply study the teachings when which I preach. The answer to the question of the nature of Buddha is revealed in them in plain sight. Oh, how long ago it was. I existed before I created a great universe 100 billion years ago. It was my will that it dictated the form which this universe took. Then I also created the laws which were hung from one corner of the universe to the other. The laws are blood vessels and blood itself that flows through the universe. It is through, it is through the laws that the universe appear as a majestic body. Okay, uh, I just read out that uh, very important part. Uh, please retake this book uh, by your hand and read. Uh, of each, each sentence, each paragraph, we can see the Buddha's mind, God's mind in that. That important. So, how much, how by how much you can buy it? Just at 20 dollars. But the worth is more than 100 billion dollars or 1 billion dollars. 
that was. So you can't find this kind of great teaching anywhere else, only in this book. So please, it is a treasure, treasure of treasures for in the whole humankind. Okay. So I am the man, I'm not a man, I am the role. God is not a human, nor is the eternal Buddha, who represents and express him. This is the rose, the teaching, Dharma. It is a teaching which govern this universe. This is a very important concept about uh, God or eternal Buddha. So next, uh, we watch Master's lecture on this book, Eternal Buddha. It's a lecture on this book called The Eternal Buddha, but well, of course, you have read it. And the content can be read in about three hours, so I think you have read it many times. However, this book, as you feel, is a book written with confidence. Therefore, if Happy Science does not have power as an organization to a certain extent, it may just sound like I'm bragging. It's the mission of the disciples to make the people of Japan say, that's actually true, rather than just appearing like that. It is the mission of disciples to spread the message that it's absolutely true and there is not one line of error without letting it slip away. So I would like you to understand this very well. In the larger scheme of things, the fact that this book was published is a turning point. It is a turning point where my own consciousness is about to change. It has not completely changed yet, but it is a book that is released at the turning point. When my consciousness is about to change from Buddha to al Kantare, I have not completely transformed yet. This book is just like the moment when a cicada climbed a tree and its back is gradually cracking open, slowly showing its wings. So, of course, after this, the laws of Alcantara will gradually come out. But the laws of Alcantara is, as you may sense, quite a big reveal. So, unless Happy Science becomes the largest organization in Japan, there is a possibility that the bottom will collapse because it cannot bear the weight of the laws. So we need enough power in the organization that can support those laws. So I'm still in a situation where I cannot preach the laws of Alcantara itself. I mean, I cannot preach Alcantara's laws until happy science is definitely acknowledged in Japan and around the world. So I would like to ask you to understand this point very well. You can discover the same situation in traditional Buddhism in the olden days. In traditional Buddhism, there are two types of sutras, Shakumon and Honmon. Shaku is the same term that appears in Honshi Sui Jaku. The kanji characters for Shaku of Shakumon is written as Shaku. It has the meaning of trace as well. Shakumon and Honmon. Hon means true. Mon means a gate. It means like a gate of an entrance, and shaku means trace or footprints. Thus the word shaku means something like a trace that has been passed through. So shaku mon is the teachings of the Buddha who lived as a human being, namely as Shakyamuni Buddha. It is called shaku mon teachings. 
And happy science, starting from the ordinary, is a Shakumon teaching. He was born as a human, strived to attain enlightenment, and taught the teachings while pursuing his own personal practice and showed the way how humans should live. This is the Shakumon teaching, in other words, the teachings of the human Buddha. In Theravada Buddhism, it is taught that Shakyamuni underwent ascetic practices for six years and attained enlightenment under the Bodhi tree. And then he started to teach arhats and establish the order, Sangha. Shakyamuni taught if you make efforts, you too can attain Buddha's enlightenment, strive for that. That's what he had been teaching. Then at some point near the end of his life, Shakyamuni suddenly began to speak different things. He began to say, in short, do not simply think that I was born as a prince of the Shakya clan, lived for 29 years and practiced asceticism for six years, attained enlightenment under the Bodhi tree, and am teaching about the enlightenment I have attained as a practitioner. He begins to say, I am actually the Buddha that has existed for a long, long time. Shakyamuni started to preach Honmon, the teaching of the true Buddha, at some point. So the disciples were getting a bit confused. They had believed that the Buddha had been teaching what he had learned or spiritually experienced. But suddenly he started to say, Actually, I am the enlightened one from the infinite past. At this point, things got a little confusing and the disciples began to fidget. What is he saying? About 5,000 disciples stood up or went home angry and all kinds of things happened. You said starting from the ordinary and now you say I am the eternal Buddha, al Kantare. <laughs> this is strange, said the people, and got angry and started booing. This actually happened 2,600 years ago. I'm doing the exact same thing right now. It is the process of the leader himself becoming more and more enlightened. And when Shakyamuni gained confidence, he started to say, Now I will tell you the truth. He said, My enlightenment as a Buddha was not something I achieved. By living for a few decades as a human being in this lifetime, in truth, I am the enlightened one from the eternal past. At that time, they did not have such units as billions of years as we do now, so the Buddha used the metaphor. Imagine that you gather up all the stars and planets of the universe and make them crumble into pieces, and then drop each grain of sand into the universe one by one as you travel and the time scale that is long enough to finish the last sand grain to be dropped is called one ko. He said, I'm actually the enlightened one from the near infinite past. That I left that sand all over the universe as I traveled through it. It is around this point that the disciples start to get confused and their heads start to go crazy. They generally don't understand and became unsure and said, impossible, unbelievable. In this book, this corresponds to the part that is describing 100 billion years ago. In this book, in the last chapter, I existed before I created the great universe 100 billion years ago. It was my will that dictated the form which this universe took. Then I also created the laws which were hung from one corner of the universe to the other. In the laws of the sun, El Miore was the ruler of Venus, a planet created 5.5 billion years ago. 
Since it went back from 5.5 billion years to 100 billion years, some of you may be wondering, what on earth does this mean? What it means is that it was 5.5 billion years ago when El Miore was created as an individual consciousness, and that El Cantare is the consciousness from the time when the universe was first created 100 billion years ago. That's how it is beyond our comprehension. The teaching here is saying that the God who created the universe 100 billion years ago is El Cantare's consciousness. It is saying that the true Buddha is in fact the very same thing as the primordial God of the universe. The same thing is said in the first chapter. It says, Faith is believing that the light that shines onto this world comes from Buddha, that is, the primordial Buddha of the universe himself. But the editorial staff cut it out and revised it to say, The light of the fundamental God of the great universe shines through the Buddha. I reprimanded it and told them, put it back to the original. The reason that I said put it back actually has to do with the lines in chapter 5. In short, it has been explained as the agent of Buddha, but to tell you the truth, to tell you the truth, the core consciousness of Alcantara is actually conversant with the Creator God of the great universe. It's telling you such a truth. In order to say that, courage is needed. So I want happy signs to grow bigger. Therefore, when happy signs comes to have more confidence, more information will actually be exposed. Originally, I intended to do this. Such information could be exposed, but it can't yet. I want you to understand that we're in such a situation. It's not that it has been said mistakenly. In this way, in the past Buddha Sutras, mainly in the Lotus Sutra, such teachings of the Trace Gate and the Source Gate appear. They are the teachings of the human Shakyamuni Buddha who attained enlightenment through making effort, and the eternal Buddha, the existence who has been enlightened since eternity. It means that those same teachings appear in the teachings of happy science. I want you to know this, please. Well, that's what it is. It's the meaning of this book, The Eternal Buddha. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that the teaching of the human Shakyamuni Buddha and the teaching of the Eternal Buddha are entirely different teachings. They are not different teachings. The existence of the Eternal Buddha, who has been existing since eternity, has to be explained through the teachings of the human Shakyamuni Buddha. Then people can sense the existence of the Eternal Buddha, who has been existing since eternity. It's the only way through which human beings can sense and understand the existence of the Eternal Buddha. And through Shakyamuni Buddha's abstract teachings, it can be presumed that the Great Divine Existence, the Primordial Buddha, who doesn't exist in this three-dimensional world, does exist. It's actually taught in such a way. Then, is the Buddha who exists in this world different from the primordial Buddha? It's not different. In order to show the existence of the primordial Buddha, the human Buddha is passing through this world like the wind. While the wind cannot be seen in reality, people sense the existence of the wind when it passes through. It's written in the laws of the sun, too. The wind caresses people's cheeks, it touches people's hands, trees rustle. Only then people can understand the existence of the wind. People can't understand the existence of the wind unless it passes through. Likewise, it is difficult for people to understand the existence of the primordial Buddha or eternal Buddha through abstract explanations. But people can sense it like the wind when it blows through this materialistic world. In this way, people sometimes learn the true nature of things. When I taught about the eternal Buddha in my seminar for lecturers two years ago, 
I taught that there are three bodies of Buddha. One is called Dharmakaya, which is the Dharma body. There is the body called the Dharma body. Then there is a body called the Samboga Kaya, which is the spirit manifested body. If anything, this body takes the form of a high spirit in the other world. This is such a spirit. Although the true law is invisible, but it takes the form of high spirits, such as that of Jesus, Shakyamuni Buddha, Moses, and appears. It's called the spirit manifested body of Dharma. Also, there are human beings who are born in this world. When such high spirits appear with their physical bodies, they are called Nirmanakaya, the physical manifested body of Dharma. It is called the physical manifested body. Like this, there's the Dharma body, the spirit manifested body, and physical manifested body. It's called the three bodies of Buddha. I'm trying to investigate thoroughly the Dharma body among them. What is the Dharma body? What is the Dharma body about? What is the Dharma body? It's the eternal Buddha, and it's the teaching itself. This is what I am saying. It is what is explained in this chapter 5 in detail. I have been the primordial Buddha, the eternal teacher, and the eternal Buddha. The eternal Buddha is the eternal Dharma itself. The eternal Dharma is the heart of the primordial God of the universe. I'm explaining this in such a way. Also, it's taught that this universe or world has been created based on my words and teachings. The entire universe is governed based on these teachings. Furthermore, my teachings exist prior to the appearance of humankind and after the extinction of humankind. This is a phrase with extreme confidence and dignity. Yes, I said my teachings exist prior to the appearance of humankind and after the extinction of humankind. Even from the viewpoint of the international history of thought, this is an extremely challenging phrase. In other words, what I am saying is that the Creator God, or the first being in Christianity, or in the religions in the desert area, is nothing but the Dharma itself in Buddhism. The world is not something that the Creator or God created with His hands. There was first the law, and this universe was created. The law itself is the principle that has created the universe. The law is the warp and weft that runs through the universe. That is what the teaching is about. And that the teaching is God Himself in disguise. If you want to know God, look to my teaching. And that teaching is the embodiment of the God who has no form. So I'm preaching through the words, sense the essence of God. And the ultimate image of God itself can be seen on earth through these printed books. This is very important and crucial. So I'm saying it is not such an idolatrous kind of God. God is the teaching itself. God is the law itself. That's what I am preaching. Please know this well. Every one of you is able to sense the image of God through the teachings of happy science. This is a very great thing. When you listen to the teachings of happy science, you may hear the words Buddha, God, gods, and so on, and some people may say that's complicated. Even from the outside, some people say it's difficult to understand. But souls with a divine status start to appear from the upper levels of the sixth dimension. There are divine souls in the seventh, eighth, and ninth dimensions. They are all gods in a larger sense of the polytheistic religion. Usually the word Buddha refers to the consciousness of Shakyamuni, but it can also refer to the ninth dimensional consciousness of the world of the Savior. But when people refer to the Buddha, it usually means his human form or the consciousness that is perceived through him. In fact, however, it is said here that the deepest depths within the ninth dimensional consciousness are the same as the consciousness that preceded the creation of the great universe. 
So it's not really separate from the so-called the Creator or the Creator God. And it is described that the core of the consciousness of the Buddha of the ninth dimension is actually one with the consciousness at the time of the creation of the great universe. So this is pretty much a great law. The reason why I say this is, well, I was listening to a tape in the waiting room downstairs before I came here, a lecture called Secrets of the Multidimensional Universe, which I once gave at Port Island in Kobe. It was a couple of years ago. At that time, I talked about the shape of the universe. I also talked about the mission of the galaxy. I have also stated that the microcosm in which we live is equivalent to the right eye of the universe. If you see the universe as a body and viewed from above, from a larger cosmic perspective, what it means is that there is, in me, a consciousness that is looking at 100 billion years of history. Well, that's what I mean. That's what I hope you can sense. Well, in this way, the teachings of the human Buddha and the truth of the eternal Buddha began to mix together in this book, The Eternal Buddha. I am saying that the teachings of the eternal Buddha will begin to appear bit by bit from now on. I would like you to understand this. So religious scholars who are not familiar with this will say it was first starting from the ordinary. But before I knew it, it became El Kantare. This is simply because they have not read the Lotus Sutra, despite them claiming to be religious scholars. That kind of thing can be found in the past history. After all, according to the listener's awareness, when they get to a certain point, the Buddha brings it to the next level. Uh, I shall talk about uh, the relating to something that related to the master lecture on the eternal Buddha. First, uh, first master Oka taught about Shakmon and Homo. Shakmon and Homo. Shakmon means an uh, expedient gate or a trace gate. The Homo means a true gate or source gate. Okay. Uh, when Shakmoni Buddha uh, born in India more than 2,500 years ago, uh, he taught mostly about what he become enlightened through his life. After he became a monk, uh, uh, started his uh, uh, religious discipline from 35 years old and accumulated wisdom and enlightened, become enlightened. And uh, he taught, he mostly totally about the teaching uh, uh, from the wisdom he acquired through the living. But uh, in the last phase of the, his life, around Beijing must, must be 75 or something like that, just the last few years, he started to talk something quite different from the previous teaching. He started to teach that he himself was enlightened long, long before ago, long, long, long ago. Uh, he said he was an eternal Buddha, everlasting Buddha. He was, he became, uh, he, he was Buddha in an uh, unfathomable uh, long before, okay? Uh, so this is a true teaching of the Buddha. It is called Homon, or source gate, or true gate. He started to this kind of true Buddha's enlightenment it's all in his all this uh, last few years. This is called Homo. Before that, it is uh, Shakumon, and on, in which he taught mostly uh, about relating to uh, human Shakamuni Buddha, human Shakamuni Buddha, right. So, but these two kinds of teaching is different, but the core concept is the same, right? Same, but the contents are quite different because uh, mm -hmm. after he started to talk about Shak, uh, Homo, the true Buddha teaching, his enlightenment is greater than only one's experience. His enlightenment is connected to the heavenly existence. So, uh, 
Shakyamuni Buddha uh, li uh, lived the life of 80 years, 80 years, and he started to his missionary work from 35 or 35, 6 or something like that. In the 45 years of the, his missionary work, only last five years is a homon teaching as a true Buddha's teaching. But it is quite different for happy science. He, from the early days of happy science, Master Oka started to teach something like the uh, homon teaching. So you can see that example in the laws of the sun, golden laws, and the eternal laws. These are the teaching not, not, not acquired through the human life as Master Oka. It is these, these three books are published in the first year of happy science. These teaching uh, kind of a revelation from the heavenly world as Buddha. So these teaching itself themselves are the common teaching already started from the happy, happy science. And uh, especially when he started to, uh, in the 1991, he published the uh, eternal Buddha and he made a declaration as a Gantare. So he officially entered the Hongmo teaching. So that is a quite different from Shakyamuni Buddha and Master Okawa, even though they are the same source, spiritual source. Uh, must, but uh, Master Okawa, uh, Shakyamuni Buddha is a, is a branch spirit of the Elkantara. The Shakyamuni Master Okawa is a core spirit. So the power, the power or not, uh, enlightenment is remarkably different, more than five times what, 10 times, I don't know, we don't know. But uh, so much different from Shakyamuni Buddha. That is Master Oka's position as a core consciousness of El Gantari. So. Next point, Master taught about the uh, eternal Buddha is the three bodies of Buddha or three bodies of Tathagata in general. Uh, Tathagata or Buddha has three bodies, three different kinds of bodies. First one, physically manifested body. It means when, when uh, these kind of high spirit uh, come into the, this physical world. So it is called a physical manifested body. Shakyamuni Buddha himself is a, uh, come to this world as a physically manifested body. And uh, Master Li Ho Kawa, as uh, core spirit, spirit happy, uh, as core spirit of the uh, Gantari is also now appeared as a physically, physical manifested body. This is uh, one way of appearing, manifestation. Secondary, secondary, uh, his spirit manifested body. This is a manifestation as a high spirit like a uh, Hami spirit or spirit of Hermes are uh, coming to happy science to guide us. Also the spirit of the Jesus Christ also appears as a high spirit. Uh, we, also we don't know, we don't see them, but uh, they come as a high spirit to, to guide us. Or the Shagam Ruta who are now in the spirit world is come to teach us, guide us as a high spirit. These are the spirit manifested body. These are kind of personified uh, style of God or high spirit. And then come the Dharma body. Dharma body is not beyond high spirit, beyond personality. It is, it is like a, like a mm, function. This is a function. And uh, as for the as for Jesus Christ, his function is love. So he works as love itself. Now, when love is manifested in the every corner of the world, it is a it is appearance of Jesus as a manifestation of love. And uh, as for as for El Cantare, it is a manifestation as a laws or teachings. So when we discussing or learning Buddha teaching, uh, it, is, it, it is when we see 
the manifestation of the uh, uh, this dharma body in a sense. But uh, it is a it's a fragment of, of that. So the dharma body of El Cantare is the laws that governs or created this universe itself. This is the most profound uh, aspect of happy science teachings. Mm. So, so their teaching, their appearance is not only appear on earth. Uh, as for the Jesus Christ, his uh, his uh, other aspect is working as a metatron in other planets. Also, we should be believe that other other exercise, other aspect will be existence that too. Yeah. So the Dharma body, Dharma body is a true essence of these great existence. This is the essence, essence. Okay. Then the third point. So the conclusion, conclusion, like a conclusion, the Alcantara is the same consciousness with the primordial Buddha or God who created great universe, who created great universe. <laughs> so this might be the most difficult to easily accept. So, but this is the truth. This is the truth. El Cantare is not only the high spirit of this earthly universe, earthly world, but also, but also he is, he is the original God of the universe. His consciousness includes that consciousness. He remember 10, 100 billion years ago when this universe is created. He has, he has the one who created this universe. He created the universe, he created many stars, planets, and he created many living creatures, including human-like existence like us in, in many, many places in the universe. Okay. So. I'd like to share uh, uh, as a as a uh, hmm, okay as a lecture by master uh, on true face true face it it is a one this is a the except that we watch while we are praying for master's resurrection this this part is always uh, that we watch but uh, it is very very important so I I put it here okay please watch again us with us. あ、大宇宙の悟り、大宇宙の仕組みから法則、これ自身が自分自身を荒らしめてるのはこの宇宙の法則は実は自分自身が作ったものでもあるし、自分自身でもあるんだということですね。歴史上も、全地球上も、世
そして今どこにいるのかということを知らしめるところまで行く教えですでそれを解けるのは一人しかいませんそれをエルカンタレというので今読んでいますそのただ一人しか解けないエルカンタレの方エルカンタレとエルカンタレの方とエルカンタレの方をまっとうにご自身していこうとしている集団相談に対する気への心をお持ちください。Uh, Master Oka taught, taught us very calmly, very calmly. But the content of the, his talk is astounding. astounding.、Okay. There is only one Buddha who is one with the original laws of the universe. There is only one Buddha who is one with the original laws of the universe. In history, in all history, across the entire globe, and in the whole universe. In the whole universe. Okay.、Uh, when first we learn about、um, El Cantare, is, is connected to the Eta,、uh, Eternal Buddha or the Primordial Buddha of the universe. He thought, Oh, we thought, many of us thought that, that this kind of existence will be, be, be not only one, but will be existent in other, other planets. Some of them are exist, but I, we know that、uh, El Cantar is a great guiding God,、uh, even among the ninth dimensional、uh, spirits, God, God of God. But、uh, we didn't think that He is the only one. But,、uh, He said, He is the only one. Only one is this huge universe. So many stars, so many planets, so many space people are there. The only us is guided by this great existence. How, what kind of miracle we are now facing? The eternal Buddha, oh no,、uh, God of the universe, who created this world, thought there is a, he thought they must send someone who tell the people, who teach the people that represent himself, representing himself. That is El Kanta. That is El Kanta. Only one existence who can represent the great, great God of the universe. Now he is appearing on earth and started to teach about the laws of El Cantar, in, which include the secret of creation of the universe. That's why, that's why many kinds of space people are gathering to watch to what happens next. Cantar. So, That is going to happen from now after his resurrection. After his resurrection, I believe he's now preparing for that to become a one greater than before or much greater than before to teach us about the laws of El Cantare, Lord of the great universe, and teach not only the humans on earth, but also to become the、uh, The、uh, savior of the universe, great savior of the universe, is the true essence of Master Ryuho Oka El Cantare. So, in that sense, the people, we、uh, are disciples of El Cantare, the responsibility is very huge, very huge. We, are, we shouldn't be the ordinary person. We should, all, each of us has a great responsibility to, to understand the laws that Master teaches us to become one with Him, with faith, strong faith, and strongly supporting Him and spreading the teaching to the world. So, while He's now away for a while, we should be, we should,、uh, we should strengthen. In our faith and understanding of the teaching of the happy science to become 10 times or 100 times greater, stronger than before. 
So uh, this is my feeling, this is my conclusion for this lecture. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Lastly, <laughs> we will we will decide together the prayer to welcome time. Prayer to El Cantare. Lord El Cantare, you are our Lord, good and Savior. We believe you are the master of masters, the highest God of this planet Earth. We believe you have the supreme power, both in heaven and on earth. You are the great spiritual being, united consciousness of Buddha and God. Lord El Cantare, we believe you will lead all people to true happiness. We believe the fourfold path of love, wisdom, self-reflection, and progress perfects the principles of happiness. And we truly believe these principles will save the entire world. O oh Lord, please grant us a holy mission to spread the truth all over the world. We will cross the vast oceans, the light of beacon of truth in every corner of the world. O oh Lord, please entrust us with a great vow to save all humankind. We will devote our lives to creating Buddha and Utopia. Lord El Cantare, as long as you are in heaven and your disciples are on earth, we will hand down a mission to future generations, achieve your great vow. We, the disciples El Cantare, will join together to become the ship of your great vow to save the people and bring them the show of enlightenment. O oh Lord, we thank you very much for granting us the prayer to El Cantare. Okay, this concludes uh, today's Sunday service. Thank you for joining.